Matthew this afternoon, we may be here one of Jesus' best known parables, the sower of the seed. I think sometimes we know these so well that we're always jumping ahead to the next verse because we know what comes next. It kind of leads us not probably listening as well as we, as we should or not really thinking about the message of the parable. So I thought we'd take just a moment and maybe dig a little deeper. It says that Jesus spoke in parables. So I really started thinking, what's a parable? And if we look, and we look at the Hebrew translation, it would mean a riddle or something, uh, there's a twist in the story. And if we think about it that way, it really sets us up to think, boy, we really need to pay attention to this story. He's really trying to tell us something. We need to figure out what it is. So as we think of that, we ought to set ourselves up to think about how can I challenge myself to discern what the true meaning of this story is? And how do we do that? It just doesn't come to us. That takes time. It takes prayer, questioning ourselves, and ultimately a willingness to be open that we might need to change. You might ask yourself, why can't Jesus just give it to us straight so we can understand it? He also tells us that today. He says, blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Meaning if we are open to God's graces, it will come to us. We will be able to understand these words. So now think back to the story. You remember what kind of seed had been sown? It never says, does it? It's left vague. That's because each one of us is a unique seed sown by Jesus. We each bear a different fruit. The story is meant to speak to each of us individually and very personally. He wants us to reflect on what our life looks like as a disciple of Christ. And as we heard in the first reading, God's word, words do not come to us only to return to him void. He's waiting for our response. He's telling us that we must show ourselves in action to be the children of God's words. And he gives us four possible responses today in Matthew. We can be like the seed fallen on the path. Those that when we hear God's word, but by the hardness of our hearts, we do not allow it into our soul. Or like the seed sown on rocky ground. Those that we've learned our faith, but when it comes to be challenged or because of suffering or persecution, we tend to fall away. Or that seed that's choked by the weeds. Allowing worldly anxieties or the pursuit of wealth to take over us, and then we never bear any fruit. Or like we are, or are we like the good soil, that we hear God's words, we understand his words, and then we live by it. But I think in reality, we're some of each one of those. But as we go through this week, we need to take some time to pray question, to examine our soul. How are we allowing the seed of God's words to be planted in our heart? And how are we allowing it to bear fruit in our lives?